Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we are working on part two of this clock that I'm working on. It is you if you saw my previous video, you'll saw you'll see when I actually made the uh, the background here, the actual wooden um, base. So as you can see, um, we poured resin on it. We have these little drips, but it's protected by the liquid latex on the back here. And we're going to leave that um, for now until we finish doing the top coats and stuff like that. Well, then we'll take everything off at once. But as you can see, so this is our piece now. We have our base ready and it has these beautiful colors in it. And the client that I'm making this for wants wanted a peacock theme. So we are using these colors, but she liked the dark peacock theme. So um, I actually had a cheese board that's in a similar style to this, and I use that as the inspiration. So we have our beautiful background, but we're gonna be covering most of that with the actual hand painted feathers on here. So what I just did, as you can see, I've actually already gone in and just kind of drawn really just really kind of loose shapes here just to give you an idea of where each peacock feather is going to be and then I'll hand paint them on top. So the what I did first before I drew that is I found the center so I just measured out and this is a 16 inch round so I just measured it the center there and the center there and then I put a little circle uh, with my marker and today I'm just using a dry erase marker like literally when I tell you guys that I'm just picking up whatever I can find I am <laughs> um, this is a dry erase marker I have in my studio sometimes I use just Crayola washable markers as long as it's a marker that you can wash off um, generally any of them will work so I okay, the dry erase is actually a bit easier because it even just wipes off even easier than the washables so in any case, so that's what I'm using. So I just kind of put in at the basic positions. It may not be exact, but just gives me an idea of where I want things to be. But before I did that, I had, this is the dial um, the client wants to use. We're not sure if we're gonna use gold or silver, but for now we're going with the gold. And we're just gonna, I centered that to my uh, my dot. And then just gives, gives me a good idea of where everything should be when I actually finish painting. And then one thing I am going to do as well, since I'm here, is I'm going to just make sure we're centered once again. About there. And I'm just going to put some, oops, put some lines around. So this way it gives me an idea um, when I'm painting kind of where the dial is going to be. So this way I don't accidentally put too much paint under the dial and there we go and the dial actually has like a, um, a protective film on it that will take off before we pour our clear but that just gives me an idea of where yeah where the uh, the dial is so this way I won't accidentally um, you know have the paint go under the dial I mean it can go a little bit but we just want to make sure we're not putting too much under there so anyways so that's where we're at and uh, in terms of the design, uh, one thing that I wanted to check before I decided to go ahead and paint is I wanted to decide on what color I wanted the peacock feathers to be. My original thought was gold, um, and so, uh, but I wasn't 100% sure. So what I'll do in that situation is I actually create um, kind of like a template on a piece of acetate. So this is just a piece of plastic, and I actually paint you know, either the whole design or a portion of the design on the acetate. And this way I can place it down and it gives me an idea of you know, how is that going to look, you know, on the piece. So I did the gold. This is kind of like the regular bright gold. I did that first. And I mean, it looks nice. It could work. But for my personal taste, I thought it was a little bit too bright. So then what I did is I created a second quick mock-up of a darker gold. So this is kind of more of a darker almost like an antique gold and I really liked this a lot better on the clock than the bright gold so I ended up deciding to go with this color instead so as you can see there's quite a bit of difference there between those two colors I don't know if the camera picks it up but this one's quite a bit more it's kind of in between a gold and a copper color and this is more of the bright gold so 
as you can see the difference here I just really liked how this one looked so we're gonna go with that and this is something that I do on a regular basis if I'm not sure how I if the design is gonna look the way I want or if I'm not sure about a color I'll just put it on a piece of acetate do a test create a template and then check it out okay so there we go we're ready to get started um, I am gonna be using my outliner today and today I'm going to be using my Cerny Relief and it's going to be the color is Vermeil and I, I can never say this right Vermeil Vermeil Gold I think someone tried to tell me in one of the comments but I still didn't get it sorry <laughs> but uh, so there's the name you can see it um, so it's basically like I said it's just a darker almost antique kind of gold uh, Vermeil for me. I don't know. Anyways, guys, so this is the color. So like I said, it's a darker color and I'm just going to go in and start painting. So we'll go into a time lapse for that. So, um, and then once we're done, I'll be back and we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so we're back and it's been a few hours so you can see everything is nice and dry and uh, yeah so now we're ready to add some color and so, like I said it's all dry and in case some I know a lot of people have been asking like how much actually of the outliner or paint do I use for pieces like this so I'm not sure if you saw in the time lapse so I did use two full tubes or almost full like I always end up leaving a little bit down here just because I find when it gets down to like this amount left it's a bit more difficult to control unless I'm just doing dots so usually I'll just hold on to these and if I'm doing a piece that just has like a lot of dots then I'll use them for that so two and then the tiniest bit out of the third one so really it was about two tubes to paint all of this so in case of any of you are wondering that's how much and then for colors, um, what I want to do to fill this in is basically the entire peacock feather is going to, each of them are going to get filled in. And um, so I actually have, I don't know if you can see them here. So I have a really pretty green. It's like an emerald type green. There's a gold. This is a very dark blue and then kind of a lighter blue and a lot of these colors that were mixed are just from let's resins um, holographic glitter line and i also have for the main part of the peacock feathers i have this mixture here which you can better see i'm gonna get glitter everywhere um here so this is my it's a custom mix that i made so sorry guys i can't share what that is but um but as you can see, it's super glittery and it's mixed with a whole bunch of colors in here to kind of make my peacock feather. And all of them have already been mixed with my Dura Gloss, sorry, Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. Um, in terms of ratios, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that it's about, I say about 50-50 um, to, is kind of like a good place to start in terms of the ratio of glitter to um, to varnish now when it comes to chunkier varnish it may not be 50 50 it might be close but it might be slightly different but generally with the fine these are all fine glitters it's about that like start around there if you find it's too thick too thick or too thin you know how to adjust it from that but that kind of gives you an idea so anyway so let's start so I'll show you one of how I'm going to uh, fill it in. We'll start with the top one here. I'm not, uh, as I was telling you, but the dry erase marker, like it comes off super easy. And I'm not even too worried about removing it since we're covering the areas anyway. But you know, if you want to, just 
it's literally just you know, it wipes right off so it's probably the easiest out of all the marker options to use on resin um, if you just want some guidelines and things like that so all right so in terms of colors we're going to be filling in the main area with uh with this custom glitter and this is a kind of a medium chunky glitter so we'll just fill that in and what i like about this mix is that it kind of has a it has a lot of colors in it actually so it gives us that really you know holographic sparkly look it's not necessarily peacock colors but I just like it because it just it's also going to really bring out a lot of the colors that I have in the background here so so yeah I mean obviously if you're doing something like this you can choose any colors that you like you don't have to you know do the same colors that that I'm doing here a lot of different color combinations would look really pretty actually when I um, posted this board the background the clock base on my Instagram I actually had I was asking if people thought you know if my followers or viewers thought that it looked like a peacock themed um, base and a lot of people said yes and I think it's because of the patterning um, in the in the base and then a lot there were a few people who said that you know if it was more of a green teal kind of base you know then it would have more of that peacock look and that's true and I definitely think that's something worth you know looking into and experimenting with so I probably will look at creating you know a piece maybe not a clock but a piece um you know with the pattern in it with those type of colors and just see you know what we end up with so there's there's unlimited options here when it comes to uh, creating these pieces like I said I I create these sometimes I want unusual color combinations and that's why I you know we'll just experiment and try different things and you know not everyone agrees <laughs> with the color combinations I pick sometimes but I mean it's nice to kind of try something different you know as well and uh, like I said I really like the background of this clock so probably will experiment a bit more with other designs for it all right so there so that is the our chunky glitter and then we'll do similar things with the other colors so the darkest blue that I have I actually use in the center it's kind of the eye of the peacock uh, feather here so and again, these colors right now, they're kind of, um, oh, you know, they're kind of muted right now because um, of the gloss varnish. The gloss varnish is opaque, as you, I don't know if you can see it in the bottle, but it is opaque. So, um, but it does dry clear. So right now when I'm laying these colors on, it kind of looks like they don't, you know, have that shine or sparkle to them. And they're kind of washed out a bit by the varnish. But you'll see that when it's dry it really allows the glitter to fully sparkle which is what i really like about this varnish so if you are, you can don't have to use this particular varnish you can use any others but like i said the one you want to make sure that whatever you choose um like i said i've heard people say they have tried mod podge and had success with that so whatever you choose just make sure it dries 100 percent clear and if you're making something that's going to you know that you want to have around for a long time like you know this clock or you know a piece you know any piece that you know some wall art or any other pieces that you want to have longevity to them then you're gonna want to make sure that also that whatever you're using uh, doesn't yellow because sometimes um, I've actually seen certain glues and things like that they do yellow in resin um, over time and like when I say over time I'm talking about like six months to a year I mean, resin itself will slowly yellow over time, but the glue, I, I had it happen to me once when the glue just yellowed. The resin was fine, <laughs> but the underneath, you could see everywhere that that glue was used, that area just yellowed. So just keep that in mind if you are planning to 
to try different types of glues and things like that, that, um, that could be an issue. So you just, you might have to test it to make sure, um, that it's not going to, you know, yellow on you. So, so this gold, and again, look at how sparkly that gold is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is so sparkly and we're just going to, I mean, there's a lot of gold already on this feather, but I thought, you know, just for these little in-between areas, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of golden sparkle in here too. So we'll quickly add that in. part here we're going to do in our green so our lovely green here a little bit on the thicker side but I'm not going to worry about it um, when it's a little bit thicker it does help it also stay in place a little better so another you know something that you want to consider if you don't want your your glitter kind of running all over the place and overflowing um, this will help. If it's thicker, it kind of helps with that too. So I'll just add this in. And I've mentioned this in previous videos before, but I know that a lot of people ask me, you know, if they can use resin for this, you know, to add glitter and to add these details in. And I mean, the short answer is yes. If that's what you want to do, you can definitely do that. Um, obviously, you should be wearing all of your, you know, protective equipment such as you know your respirator gloves goggles all those things um but for me i like using the varnish because um a it gives me more time because the resin that i use cures super fast it cures within like or starts to like gel and cure um around at 20 25 minutes so that would definitely not give me enough time to you know paint this entire clock so um so the varnish it gives me a lot more time like i have upwards of over an hour maybe more to do what i'm doing here and i don't have to you know again and also i don't have to worry about wearing my protective equipment when i'm using this uh, varnish because this is a water-based varnish and um yeah so i can also talk to you guys while i'm here so it just gives me it just gives me more flexibility if I need to stop in the middle because my kids need me I can do that as well and I don't feel like you know I'm wasting resin because now I have to try to get away from, you know stop what I'm doing and walk away from working with resin like there's for me there's a lot of reasons and uh, yeah and I like I said I like um, not having to rush when I do this I like taking my time sometimes I change my mind in terms of you know the design or, or sorry the colors I could if I change my mind right now but the colors I could literally like take my paintbrush and scrape all of this up um, off of the board and just use another color I could you know wipe it clean use some rubbing alcohol clean it out and then I could start over and with a new color with resin that's a little bit more challenging to do to try to you know, change colors you know in the middle of a pour so those are all reasons why I choose to do it this way. But if you feel that you want to use resin and do it, go right ahead. There's definitely no reason why you shouldn't. It can be a little bit more tricky in some of these really detailed areas. But again, you know, you do what you feel comfortable with and what makes you happy. So, all right. So anyways, I'm going to go into a time lapse and get the rest of this filled in. And then I will see you on the other side.
Okay, so all of our uh, peacock feathers are now all glammed up. We've got our glitter in place. They're still wet. I just finished painting them, so I need to leave them to dry. But this was the first one we did, so you can kind of see how the colors are starting to kind of come through. Let's see if we can get that closer. You can kind of see. You can kind of see how the colors are coming through there, I think. Yeah, so anyway, so there we go. Uh, I'll show you quickly what this dial, and again, the customer wants, had meant, or originally asked for gold, but we will consider the silver as well. So this is what the gold dial looks like. And again, this is, this has like a film on it. So when you actually peel the film off, it's a mirror. Um, dial so it actually has really nice reflections in it. So that is pretty much how our clock is starting to look. I'm gonna... Oh, so new! Oh, that's good. All right, so we'll put that in the middle. Uh, obviously, they'll have hands and stuff once we um, let this dry and add a top coat. Uh, let me see if I can grab a silver dial so we just can look at that too. Okay, so here's the silver. Uh, I'll try to carefully take that one out. So that's our gold. And this is what our silver would look like. And as I mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, um, the thing that I discussed with the customer was that sometimes, um, you know, obviously we think that, you know, the gold, because we're doing gold, detailing is what's going to look best but sometimes when there's a lot of gold or a lot of one color sometimes contrasting with an opposite color sometimes works really nicely too so like right now um again this would be a mirror it's a silver mirror so again when we look at this if i was to still put gold hands for this clock um this silver might actually look really nice because again it picks up on you can see it kind of picks up on how the glitter shimmers has the holographic shimmeriness to it so and it kind of brightens up the whole clock so again it'll be the, the customer's choice on what she wants but again you can just kind of see the difference between so again this is the so just do it on top there so you can see that with the gold it kind of you know keeps everything kind of in the same tone same ranges here and it does look pretty so if she chooses this it's completely fine um as you can see it looks fine it's just a different type of gold compared to the uh, coppery gold that we're using here but the silver kind of also brightens up the clock so again if she doesn't want this much contrast in her clock then you know going with the gold is the better choice for her so anyways just want to show you guys those options too so like I said, it's sometimes, and that's, this is the reason why I wait until the design is completely done to decide because sometimes we, in our, we envision one thing, but then actually it turns out that maybe actually seeing, you know, something a little different might trigger a different response or a different idea. And so I just like to, especially when it comes to something like this that I can add later, I like to do that so then we can kind of get a better full picture of what everything looks like. So anyway, like I said, I kind of like the silver and like I said, I would put gold hands. So then, and I think the sides currently um, are just the same color as the background. I'll show you guys quickly. So the sides, let's see if the bottom might be easier. So the sides are, it's basically the same as the back of the clock. But a lot of times what I do is I'll actually paint the sides as well um, with some sort of metallic. I'll show you, or a glitter. I'll show you what I have. So I think I showed this to you guys previously in another video as well. This is another clock that I'm working on. And on the sides, I just did kind of a similar uh, complementary glitter that's similar to the top. So. Um, that's usually what I do, something like that on the sides, so that it um, has a bit of contrast on the sides as well. It's not just usually the same background going along the sides. But again, it always depends on the customer and the client and what they want in these types of things. So 
gonna put this one here again just to look at it again so in any case so we're gonna let this dry both yeah <laughs> so we'll let this dry um it, i'm gonna let it dry overnight just because it's late now and um when it comes to the varnish i want it to be super 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 dry um just because if there's any moisture in it, it is a water base so if there's any moisture in it at all if it hasn't fully dried it will cause issues and react with the resin so it'll cause the resin to turn cloudy and it's that's not, definitely not something we want so we need to make sure it's super super dry so like i said i'll leave it overnight and it should be good tomorrow to add our top coat. Um, before I add the top coat, I will be to having the customer choose the dial. And uh, that needs to be stuck on first. Uh, usually I'll use my gloss varnish. This are, these are not adhesive. So I will just use the gloss varnish, brush them on the back so I can stick it down. And then I will also remove the film. Um, you'll see this in, probably in a time lapse soon um, when I do do the top the top coat so I'll peel off the film and then I'll be ready to then um, do my top coat as I mentioned earlier I do have the liquid latex on the bottom so um, like I said so there's a few steps still to do so I still have to do the sides I need to figure out which dial once those are figured out then I can do the top coat and I'll do two to three layers of clear top coat on a clock like this so anyways so that's the process but you'll kind of see the time lapse as we go along and uh, yeah, so the next time I'm talking to you, um, we will be looking at the final piece. Okay, so we are back and here is our clock. As you can see, it's all nice and smooth and shiny now. And uh, so this did end up having uh, two coats of clear on top of the design. So that's what gives it that nice shiny shine. And as you saw in the time lapse, so first thing I did is I had to, um, I, I just used some gloss varnish to adhere the uh, dial to the clock base and then there was like a film that was on the on the clock itself and that just protects it because it is like a mirror type of look as you can see so um so you take the film off i always do that right before i'm going to pour the resin so i don't want to get any fingerprints or anything on the dial so i took that off and then i poured resin on top i thought was one coat and i also covered all the sides and then I did the second coat uh, the next day, which was, you know, eight hours later, later or something like that. So, so we have our beautiful finish now. I did actually end up leaving the sides on this piece the same. I, and sometimes I paint the sides a different color, but I did talk to the client and she really liked this look of the drips on the side, which I think is so cool as well. As you can see the texture from the base, when I actually did the design for the base, it did... Uh, run over the sides and we get this really cool finish so and I've also gone ahead and removed all the liquid latex off the back so you can see you have a nice clean finish on the back and there we go so now all that's left is to assemble our clock so the first thing I'm going to do I do all the mechanisms here so I have this and the little hanging piece and then we have our hands and our um, second hand uh, sorry yeah our two hands and our second hand and so all I need to do now is find the center. So let's quickly do that. So we know that this is a 16 inch base. So I just need to make, measure the center, which is going to be eight inches. So approximately there. Then we do the same thing on the vertical, which end up being perfect. So there, oops, so there we go. And I lost my marker. So that is our center right there. Okay, so the next part I don't usually do on camera and I probably can't really do it on camera here either just because I can't really show it, but um, I just use a regular drill and uh, let me grab it just one second. Okay, so this is my drill. It's just a regular cordless hand 
or cordless drill and I have this drill bit. Now I don't know exactly what the size this drill bit is because my husband actually measured it. So what he did is he, um, you know, he kind of measured what was necessary for um, this piece on the clock mechanism. And then he just made sure that he had a drill bit that was large enough that this could go around it. So, um, so that's what we have. And yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. If there's Maybe there's a way to check it. I'll have to check the drill bit after. But if we kind of measure it, it looks like it is about three eighths, approximately that. So in any case, I'll see if I can double check the size, but I think it's about three eighths. Now, in terms of how I actually use the drill, I actually just hold it <laughs> over the side of my table. So I'll just bring it down. My table edge is over here. So I'll just bring it on the side of my table and I'll literally just drill down. So I would just hold my drill like this, center it on the hole and drill down. I don't want to do it here just because I'm afraid I'm going to go through and hit the, the countertop here. So let me just do that quick off camera and we'll be right back. Okay, so there we go. You can see I just drilled that through. Got all the little bits on here. And the main thing is, is just to be, um, just go slow. Like I haven't had, I know, excuse me. Um, I know that some people have asked me, you know, if I'm, if I've ever had the resin crack and I haven't um, with the resin that I use. So like I said, I tend to just go slow with it, with the drill. And I haven't really had ever many issues with the resin cracking. And uh, yeah, so um, if you have had issues, maybe let me know what the circumstances were. So this way I would be aware, but the only time I can imagine it might crack is if it's maybe if the resin is very cold, um, then maybe it'd be more brittle in and more likely to, um, to crack. But otherwise um, my studio is pretty warm down here. We're about 25 degrees in here. So um, I generally don't have any issues. All right, so there we go, guys. Um, I hope that you like this clock. I actually am so incredibly happy with how this clock turned out. It's, I had a vision in my mind and um, I had talked to the customer about it and we just completely agreed on what we thought this clock should look like. And I had sent her a sketch and she loved it. And um, this the whole final piece turned out even, um, well, as I was expecting, but luckily also exceeded the client's expectation. So I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really happy about it. And you can just see, see if I can get, might have fingerprints on it now that I was doing all that stuff, but um, you can just see how it sparkles. It just looks so cool. And the background, as I mentioned before in the previous video, that I love how this background turned out, but I did want to have it, you know, I had created more um, kind of texture and designs. Like I ran the designs through um, the resin a lot more than I would normally because I want it to blend a little bit more than typical. If I was just creating just a piece that was going to go on the wall, then I would have probably not have put made it so that there was so many uh, little intricate details in here like it just so you can tell it started to blend a little bit and that's what I wanted because I want it to be a little bit more muted so this way it complements the um the peacock feathers but doesn't take away from them and I think that actually worked out really well on this piece and like I said and as mentioned before that I did give the client an option in terms of the silver or the gold and she did pick gold so that's why we have a fully gold piece and I think it works beautifully for this and um, so the silver would have looked nice too but it always comes down to you know what the customer wants what's going to work in their home what works with their style and I'm really excited to get this to her so that she can display it in her home and uh, <laughs> finally have it in her own hands so anyways guys I hope you like this tutorial and if you did don't forget to uh, leave a comment below let me know what you thought of the process whether you saw the earlier video where I was making the base um, and then followed up with the second video, or if you only saw the second video, let me know what you thought, you know, of how this final piece turned out and uh, anything else you want to know. And also any other ideas that you have for other types of designs for clocks and things like that. Um, I love this style where we have the dial in the middle and then the, the designs on the outside. I just think it looks so neat. It just kind of separates everything, but it still makes it legible that you can still, you know, clearly read what the time is on it. So even though it's an art piece, it's also functional, but Anyway, I'm going to get going, so don't forget to, uh, like I said, leave a comment and like, subscribe, and share if you haven't already. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.